They say life could be understood backwards. But it must be lived forward. That's right. Ricky? Ricky, where you at? What's on? Yeah, I'm coming back. Here we are, old friend, together again. Yeah, I'm coming back. The fortress, dying husk of its former self. I think the same about you. Yeah, I'm coming back. What do you want, Bozari? Today's gang is 600 million in cold, hard cash. This again. It's gone. <laughs> You're saying I'm driven by revenge. I am. Rise from the ashes. Who are these people? They're just after money. The best way to hurt you is to destroy every little thing you love. Do your worst. Madrice, would you please give my friend here a hand? Rise from the ashes. I must make you suffer. Please. Let everyone go. Where are you? Rise from the ashes. Hello, my name is Alec Toombs. I am here with Josh Sternfeld, the director of Fortress Sniper's Eye, which is releasing on uh, VOD and in select theaters on Friday, April 29th. Um, hi, Josh. How are you today? Great. Thanks a lot, man. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you as well. Um, I guess I'll jump in uh, yeah. with a question real quick. Uh, a lot of your earlier works... Uh, such as Winter Solstice or uh, Mascada, uh -huh. were dramatic in nature. Uh, what appealed to you about tackling a more action-oriented uh, offering such as Fortress Sniper's Eye? Well, what I was struck by in such a positive way immediately was that the screenplay had both. That's what I really loved about it. Uh, and I, was, I really connected with the characters. I really connected with the character arcs. I really connected with the backstory. And then there were also these great, exciting scenes that I thought were gonna be such an incredibly fun challenge to shoot. So it was really that combination. I had wanted to do an action movie for a while. I had been looking for something to do. Um, and when I read this screenplay, I was just like, this is the one, this is the way to start to explore this genre. You know? Cool. Um, you've worked with actors such as Welker White and Michael Ciro, uh repeatedly. Yeah. What is it about these actors uh, that appeals to you, or what is it about you that might appeal to them? Well, with Welker, it's hilarious. I worked with her in my first feature film, but then there was a number of years where I was not in communication with her. And I didn't even know she was going to be in this film until right before shooting, they told me. So when we saw each other, it was this funny, hilarious, like reunion moment. Uh, but I had been tracking her work for many, many years and I thought she was brilliant. I mean, I thought she was unbelievable in The, the Irishman, incredible. Um, Agreed. Mike Ciro uh, is an actor that I came to know on my second feature, Moscata, which is now quite a few years ago now. And we had always stayed friends in the intervening time. So we had always kept each other sort of uh, engaged on various projects we were doing. I think he's a fantastic actor, Mike. Um, I think he's really grown tremendously as an actor in these intervening years. Uh, and then when he told me he was doing a lot of action films with Emmett Furla, uh, I was sort of really interested. Um, and in some ways, although it went through another producer, but in some ways it was kind of Mike that kind of brought me into the world of this production company in a way. He made some early introductions. You know. Very cool. Um, you shot the movie in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Uh, how did this differ from shooting in New Jersey where you shot Winter Solstice or in the Catskills where you shot Mascada? Were there advantages and or disadvantages to shooting there? 
Well, the only, uh, it wasn't a disadvantage, but because I had such no experience with Puerto Rico at all. I mean, I had been to Puerto Rico once with my wife and very young daughter then for a brief resort vacation on the coast. Uh, but I had no experience with San Juan. I had no experience with the, uh, the, the rainforest outside of San Juan, with any of the local people. I didn't speak a word of Spanish. I didn't know anybody in Puerto Rico. So in that sense, it was a brand new experience, um, but everybody was so great. And the island there has such unbelievable cultural power and electricity and such beautiful scenery that like I quickly fell in love with it. I mean, I would love to do more work there, uh, but just the fact of not knowing it was different, you know? Sure. Um, you've taught screenwriting and film direction at uh, New York New University's uh, Tisch yeah. School of the Arts. Uh, do you prefer teaching film or making films? Oh, definitely making. Okay. Um, yeah, for sure. In fact, you know, I, uh, I, I, I loved my time teaching. I, I, I don't at all want to disparage the experience. It was an amazing experience. I was teaching at a time when my, uh, my first, uh, where my daughter was born, uh, and uh, my wife was also working, and uh, I needed to kind of stay home a little bit more. Uh, so it was a great time then. Uh, but once my daughter started to grow up a little bit, like I knew I wanted to go back into production for sure. You know, Cool. And you're an alum of the university as well, correct? Yeah, exactly. So I went there for my master's program. Um, I'm dating myself now, but it was like the late 90s. Um, sure. Yeah. So it was, it's a great school, you know. Awesome. Um, given recent news of Bruce Willis's condition, and his retirement. Um, do you have any especially uh, fond memories you could share with us about working with him? Just that he was an unbelievably cool and easygoing guy. And he wore his celebrity very disarmingly, meaning he was so laid back. He was so professional and hardworking. And he was so friendly. And uh, I've told this story. It, it is true. He knew this was my first action movie. And when I first met him, he gave me like a Jolly Rancher candy as like a gift, like a kickoff gift as a joke. And he was like, hey, kid, you know, let's go to blocking rehearsal. You know, um, he was just just such a pleasure to be around and, and super present. Um, and I told him I, I said to my wife a million times uh, and, and my brother as well, you know, I can't believe my first action movie is going to now be one of the last Bruce Willis movies ever. And he was like one of the biggest action stars for 30 or 40 years. Like, it's just astonishing to me. Um, but he was a dream to work with. That's awesome. Um, I've seen performances by some actors in your previous films of late that I was really struck by. Do you tend to keep up with the work of people you've worked with? I, I saw uh, Nit Ram with Anthony Alpaglia recently. Oh, and yeah, I didn't see that. He was incredible I, in it. Uh, Nick Stahl great. was in a movie last yeah. year uh, called uh, What Josiah Saw. Um, yeah. I was blown I away by Jonathan Tucker's work on the TV show Kingdom. Um, yeah. Do you tend well, to keep tabs on these people after you're done uh, working with them? Some, sometimes yes, sometimes no. It depends. Okay. And it doesn't have anything to do with uh, how good of an experience you had with them. You, you know, I've had great experience, in all honesty, with every actor I've worked with. I, I don't recall a single bad experience, honestly. Um, right. Tucker, Tucker, I definitely have kept in touch with and, uh, not often, but I uh, have sent texts and got texts from him. I've socialized with him uh, occasionally in LA when I've been out there, Nick, I was in touch with for a while after Moscata, but then we sort of drifted apart. Sure. Anthony, I was also in touch with for a few years after winter Soltis. We thought we were going to do something again together, but then the financing never came together. Sure. Um, and sometimes I've seen actors after I worked with them. I saw Norman Reedus at a party once years after I worked with him on Moscata and said, we said hello. Uh, but then I never saw him again after that. Uh, so it just depends. It just depends. Sure. Sure. Um, do you have anything else on the horizon that you're at liberty to talk with us about? Only that I would love it to be another action movie. And, um, you know, I'm starting to see some screenplays now. Uh, from some different producing teams. Um, but I just I just love shooting and I would love to be back out on something this summer. 
So I'm reading some scripts now. Cool. Um, my name is Alec, and uh, I can't leave this interview without a slightly smart Alec question. I have seen the movie. It's called Fortress Sniper's Eye, but there's no sniper or any sniper rifle in the movie. Uh, That's right. How, how did that come to be? Well, no one told me, but I love the title. And this it is, is a cool my, title, un, this inarguable. Is, this is my interpretation of it. This is what I said to another interviewer, and this is what I believe, although no one cleared this with me. You know, it, to me, the film, why it works and why it's strong, it's all about lurking dangers hidden around the corner and things that are sort of your, in your periphery and things that you can't always see but are super dangerous. And I feel like that's a theme in the movie. I, I really do feel that's a theme. So when they told me the title, that was where my mind went. Um, so I don't know. I mean, uh, somebody smarter than me can answer, but that's my feeling on it. it. It's a cool title. It'll probably draw people to rent the movie or go catch it in a movie theater. I hope so. I hope so, bro. Cool. Well, I uh, greatly appreciate your time today and uh, enjoyed our chat. Uh, Fortress Sniper's Eye will be available on VOD beginning April 29th and will be available in select theaters as well. Josh, thank you for your time. Thank you, man. Hello, my name is Alec Toombs. I am uh, here with Kelly Grayson, the uh, star of Fortress Sniper's Eye, which releases this Friday, April 29th in select theaters and on VOD. Thanks for joining me, Kelly. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Um, my first question for you is, um, given recent news of uh, Bruce Willis's condition and retirement, do you have an especially fond memory of working with him? Oh my goodness, so many. It was such a gift, honestly. And I think, you know, the beautiful thing about life is it definitely shows who you are, right? The, the more you just the longer you live, the more you're authentically you, right? And I think what's so beautiful about him is that he's just an authentically, genuinely awesome person. And, um, you know, he's a superstar and everybody knows him. He's this amazing icon, but then off camera, he's just a super awesome person. And so I think all of those moments were my favorites. You know, we just had normal candid conversation with someone who genuinely cared. Sure. Um, this is your fourth movie with Michael Cirao and your third with Willis. Um, what is it about these guys that keeps bringing y'all back together? And have you de developed a shorthand at this point? So, yeah, I mean, I think in the, generally when you find a team that works well um, or people that you like working with, um, they ask you to come back. <laughs> and so sure. that's kind of, um, it, was, it was a privilege to be with Bruce's team because, you know, that happened. They were like, you work really well with this team. We would love for you to do it again. And so, yeah, it was awesome. And Michael's great and been a friend for a while, and yeah, super talented actor. And so, yeah, it's just one of those that, I don't know, I think when you work well with people and they keep asking you to come back, it's a compliment. Cool. Um, you do a fair amount of stunt work in this picture, and rumor has it you're a fan of doing this. Um, what is it about this process that appeals to you, and how will this lead you to one role or another in the future? Um, I do love stunts, it's my favorite. <laughs> I'm an athlete. I've always been an athlete. And um, my the daily life is about honing and, you know, just sculpting like my body, right? I keep it, I keep competition ready, like every day of my life. So when I'm able to do a role where that is actually an asset, right? It actually is part of the role. It actually enhances the character. It's just sort of easy for me to be more authentically that, you know, that person. And so, um, yeah, in the future, I would love to do more that work all all film and all genres is really beautiful and there's all of that emotion and all of those other things but when you get to add in the stunts and um the athletics then it just sort of next levels that for me like a lot of folks i'm assuming uh you watch J jesse metcalf on desperate housewives or chad michael murray on one tree hill uh what was it like to work with these guys they are super awesome um just incredibly professional so talented um and then just as real humans, just fun. Jesse's fun, just always, you never know. <laughs> you never know what's gonna come up. Um, Chad is just such a good man, like family man, super devoted. He's what a lot of men should aspire to nowadays. So on camera, they're incredibly um, talented and in real life, just great. 
do you have any other projects coming up that you're at liberty to discuss with us or anything you're excited about that you have coming up? Um, so many things actually um, in the film world as well as um, actually a couple other worlds that I kind of bounce back and forth between. Um, films, there's some really great roles that are coming up but I can't actually discuss them yet. It's that, you know, that whole industry thing where it's not actually anything until you're on set. So stay tuned, like look, you know, look at my Instagram, Kelly Grayson Live, Grayson with an EY, um, and I'll update there, you know, but, and then also humanitarian work. I um, have been working on highlighting heroes around the world, and it's like a huge part of what I love to do is to um, find people who have been just true heroes, you know, not because they have a spotlight, not because they're, you know, famous or anything else, and they're doing some good deed to look good, but like genuinely loving, caring for people, and to come alongside them and tell their stories and help them get um, attention they need so that their penny or their 10 cents can turn into ten dollars has been really, really amazingly rewarding. Um, and then I am working, another thing that I really love is I've been working with Mr. McDonald. He's a uh, just world-class, unbelievable sculptor, and I've um, been privileged to be his muscle study slash muse for multiple pieces, so I'm working on a bunch of that currently. Very cool. Um, some of your last response should segue really nicely into this next question. Um, you and your My Impact Foundation have uh, done much to end violence against women and have collaborated with the PNG Tribal Foundation, a charity organization based in Papua New Guinea. Um, can you please tell us more about your organization uh, how it's impacted your life, and how others can get involved if they're so inclined. All right. Um, yeah, this is an area I love love to talk about because it's just a huge part of my life. Um, so I work with campaigns worldwide, um, gender-based violence as one of them in Papua New Guinea. That one actually was really close to my heart because it ended up being a nationwide campaign. They ended up garnering the favor of the, I did a commercial with them and just helped with their work there. Um, and then they ended up regarding the attention of the UN, they ended up having the EU partner with them for the first time, you know, in the history. Um, and then they ended up helping, you know, bring a lot of like medical and um, just resources to the country. And it was crazy because when I was there, I was literally wit witnessing history. Like all these tribes came together to what used to be like the killing fields and they were laying down their weapons and they're saying, we're going to seek um, peace and justice and and as a result, you know, of this campaign. So it was pretty amazing. I've been in those kinds of situations so much all over the world. So I work with just people that I believe in at home and abroad. And um, it's taken me to the most far flung frontiers, like all over the world, um, you know, all over Africa. I was in Africa for six weeks this last summer and um, Iraq and lots of places, too many to name. And um, I think the one thing that is kind of the through line that is, amazingly incredible is when you work with people who are genuinely loving, truly caring, have, has nothing to do with the spotlight. It's life on a whole other level, you know, and almost unilaterally, probably unilaterally, people who love is not because they had an easy life. It's because they've lived hard things and they've chosen love. And um, it's a powerful choice and it changes your entire identity and your life in such a powerful way, which segues into my impact. Um, I have created, well, I'm still working on creating, but I finally got the 501c3 <laughs> done. Um, it's a process, oh my goodness. Um, and it's, for, for me, it's really hard because like I spend so much time doing that it's like then to like get online and do, you know, techie stuff. It's just not my good thing. So anyway, you know, it's like you can really, really love people or you can create technological things. And sometimes there's a challenge <laughs> between getting both of them done. But um, the My Impact platform is basically I'm tr um, creating a platform that highlights heroes, right? And where people can realize the significance of that. Like nobody can change the world like you can. And your impact is as unique as your fingerprint, right? And what does love look like? And what is the ripple effect of that? And so just inspiring everybody to look inside and think about, you know, how am I, how can I change the world today? Like maybe you can't change the entire world, but you can change the entire universe of that one person that's looking at you right now who needs something. And it could be a neighbor, it could be or you know the environment, or a little puppy, or whatever it is that it, that your heart um, is in tune with, it's important and it matters. And in changing other people's lives, it ultimately is scientifically, physiologically proven to heal you. And so it's kind of one of these full circle, beautiful things, and something I live. 
that's awesome, Kelly. Um, I, I thank you for your humanitarian efforts and for your time today. Uh, I've been Alec Toombs with the Film Yap based out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, again, thank you for so much for your time. Uh, Fortress Sniper's Eye will be out this Friday, April 29th in select theaters and on VOD. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Have an amazing day. Thank you, you too.